Well, hello. Thank you for joining. You are here for another installment. We are going to put full self-driving to the test to see whether or not it can navigate everyday daily life in a normal suburban environment. I live here in Dayton, Ohio, and we're going to see whether full self-driving can take us from home to our work and then whether it can bring us from work back home. So we're going to put it through three different tests. One, full self-driving uh, the whole way on just surface streets. Secondly, we're going to go full self-driving and then take navigate on autopilot and then back to full self-driving. You're going to see the good and the bad. And I'm going to be curious what percentage of my driving is actually eliminated as a result of full self-driving. I think the results are going to surprise you in the way that I know that it surprised me when I first got full self-driving. So buckle up. Let's go. So one question I get asked a lot is how does full self-driving work? Can you actually just sit back, put in the destination, and does the car just drive for itself? Well, no, that is not the case. So if you were expecting that, you can just fast forward to the end uh, or skip to the next video. But if you're interested to see what exactly full self-driving looks like, you're in the right place. Uh, please consider hitting the thumbs up, uh, the like button, and uh, hitting the subscribe button for the almighty YouTube algorithm. In doing so, it helps recommend more content and it helps give me an idea as to what you like and uh, what others like here on YouTube. So thanks so much for uh, your time and engagement. I look forward to answering your questions down below in the comments. I've got a number of other self-driving videos up there, but this is the first comprehensive video that I'm gonna do where I just do daily life from home to work, work back to home, and just show you what the day in the life looks like. Uh, these are gonna be a little bit longer of an installment in terms of the length of time, but I hope it gives you an idea of what full self-driving is like uh, day to day life. So I've had full self-driving for about 15,000 miles so far and uh, has gone through two different upgrades. So I'm on the third uh, version of the full self-driving software. It has gotten remarkably better. In fact, I'm on 10.69.3.1. Uh, in case you're wondering if you're watching this at some later point, and I'm sure there will be future versions that come out and that make this software a lot better in the future. But as of right now, just giving you an unfiltered look into what full self-driving looks like and uh, so you can see for yourself whether or not full self-driving makes sense for you and uh, whether or not you want to spend, I think it's the $15,000 to upgrade um, the self-driving. When I purchased this, I purchased this uh, several months ago, well before uh, the price hikes went up and so was able to get it at a much cheaper price. But even that, once I purchased the full self-driving, it took almost 90 days from the day at which I enrolled in full self-driving and then actually received the software. And during that 90 day period, I had to uh, drive with a very safe safety score that Tesla has. You can look at the merits, but in short, you can't brake hard, you can't turn hard, uh, you can't follow too close. And then if you have any sort of forced disengagement. So during that time period, I maintained a 99 to 100% uh, 100 safety score. Uh, now that that safety score is uh, gone and I've gotten the software, I can drive the car uh, normally again. But for that time period, I did have to uh, maintain that. I think now the requirements are a lot lower for those individuals to get it. Uh, there is a series of five strikes that uh, you kind of get. So if you use the software inappropriately, for example, if you put a steering wheel weight on the car, it'll know that. If you take your eyes off the road and you're looking at your phone while the car is driving, um, or if there are other sorts of what they call forced disengagement. So forced dis disengagements is where the system turns off, um, not you turning the system off. So for example, if the car does something unexpected and I turn the system off, that doesn't count. So uh, right now uh, I've been living with full self-driving for about 15,000 miles. So I'm going to take you on the road so you can see exactly firsthand what full self-driving is like, and it can give you an insight into everyday life and living. Um, and I, at the end, I'm going to actually recap and share what percentage of the driving has been eliminated, at least on these two experiences, uh, as a result of using FSD beta. So come along, let's go, let's get on the road and let's get to it.
All right, we have our destination in. We're gonna go ahead and put it in drive and then full self-driving and we'll see if we can drive to our first destination at work this morning. So I'll give you a real idea of what full self-driving beta actually looks like in real life. Let's go. So we'll wait for the uh, little uh, steering wheel to show up. I'm gonna go over the curb. And then we'll put it in full self-driving. You'll notice you have to keep uh, your hand on the wheel to provide a little bit of counterweight here. So first test, we have a stop. Street is going left to right. Stops way early. And we're creeping forward. Nothing left, nothing right. Clear to go. So aside from the stop early, it worked actually very well. So we'll drive through the neighborhood. There's no lane lines that can sometimes trick or be a little bit of a complication for full self-driving. Oncoming car here. Let's see if it moves over. It moves over to the right. And there is a car parked in front of somebody's house. Let's see what happens and it just goes around the car. Wow. Let's see if it moves back over. There's again two to three cars up ahead. Let's see if it moves over. So it moves over to go around. It's slowing down just a little bit. Overall pretty smooth. So I've been living with full self-driving for about three months now, so kind of have an idea of uh, how the full self-driving is working. I've had uh, two upgrades in the time in terms of the full self-driving software upgrade. And so I've noticed that it's gotten a lot better in terms of its prediction and uh, certain areas that used to kind of dork up now don't dork up anymore. So overall, really good. So. Definitely not perfect, but uh, so far, this is a just an uneventful drive. One of the things I do like, and it moves over just a little bit to the right to kind of hug the road to avoid the car that just went by. One of the things I do really like about the full self-driving is it really pays attention to the speed limits. And so uh, being somebody who did, uh, before I got my Tesla, have a number of tickets on their license, it kind of helps me uh, pay attention or it pays attention for me so as a result I don't end up going over the speed limit on accident. It's stopping, not really sure for what. Maybe for the minion. <laughs> so again I haven't had to touch the brake or the gas uh, this entire trip aside from just the initial activation outside of our house. So this is a busy road. Luckily we're turning right. So let's see how it does. The visibility is a little bit obscured because of one, the telephone pole, two, uh, the hedgerow. Again, it's creeping forward for visibility. It stops. Got my foot hovering over the brake. And it looks like it's going to be okay to go after this car. So again, so far a pretty uneventful drive. Tenth of a mile, we're going to turn left. There's a little light here. Signal, left-hand lane. turn really wide but 
Nothing wrong with that. navigates these S-bends very nicely. Again, nothing too complicated, but it does really well so far. Really no, uh, no shenanigans or anything unexpected. It's just a typical drive. I do think on these turns, it hugs the, little, the middle lane just a little bit too much. In my opinion, uh, I'd rather be to the right-hand side. I wish it would kind of drift in and out of the lane just a little bit, not in and out, but I wish it would drift inside the lane left and right, uh, one direction or the other. <clears throat> uh, just because sometimes uh, oncoming traffic will uh, sometimes inadvertently turn uh, or be a little bit closer than I would like. So far, no interventions. It's going to see the, the car moving over. It should stop a little bit more quickly. And it stops appropriately. Every once in a while, I can feel it just barely tap the brakes, just for a millisecond. Something about the light and dark, light and dark, light and dark uh, with the bright sun in the morning can play tricks on the cameras. It just did it again. But uh, again, not, not very noticeable, not jerky. Just You just feel it. It's almost like it's lit it, lifting off the gas, pressing it, lifting off, pressing it. So it's not quite as smooth as what you might expect with quote unquote cruise control. But here, it's working well. So coming over the hill, it sees the car in front of us and it's starting to slow down again. My foot has not even had to be anywhere near the, uh, the brake or the gas. So again, I'm just applying light pressure uh, to the wheel with my hand. Nice wide sweeping turn up here. Kind of give you a sense as to what it will do. In a second it should tell me to put my hands back on the wheel. I'll get a little notification or what I like to call as the Tesla nag. So there it just 
thought it needed to change lanes and then it changed its mind, but it didn't actually change lanes. It just sometimes sees the turn lane on the left hand side and thinks it needs to change. So overall very good and very smooth. Let's see if it moves over. We've got a turn in the left-hand lane. A little bit, little bit late. I'm going to take control because for some reason it didn't want to move over. That's one turn that I've noticed. So I re-engaged. So again, it's going to wait. Going to stop it because it started to move forward into the lane. So this is sometimes when the full self-driving just get just gets to be a little bit annoying in terms of um, in terms of the drive because it actually is just more embarrassing than anything else. So I'll re-engage the drive. So back there, it didn't turn over soon enough. Secondly, there was a car behind that was starting to pull in and uh, starting to cut me off. This van that's going to go by and. Um, and then on top of that, sometimes I feel like it pulls out a little bit more into the oncoming traffic lane while it's trying to wait for its turn. Uh, but sometimes the car is just overly cautious, which granted, that's not a bad thing. It just can lead to some embarrassing circumstances where your car may be more into the oncoming traffic lane. You may not get into the turn lane right away. And as a result, you'll need to take over and uh, take control. So, so far, uh, two times really the same situation back there we've had to take control and make sure that the full self-driving was actually that the car was doing what it was intended to do So far, a pretty uneventful drive. That turn back there is one that I have had issues with multiple times. So something about the way the car reads the, um, the turn lane. I think it's because the turn lane opening isn't quote unquote wide enough for the car to recognize. And then when there's a solid line, the full self-driving doesn't want to cross that solid yellow line or that solid uh, line, which you technically shouldn't do, but they only give you about one car length to pull in there because there is a electrical substation with a turn lane that for some reason they put in a turn lane for with a line, a one car break, and then there is the, the turn lane, which is two to three cars deep. So again, it doesn't leave you a lot of time to technically go in. So that's where, you know, as a human, you're able to better interpret what should happen. And in that case, you have to go across the white line to turn left to get to the turn lane. But the computer or the artificial intelligence doesn't quite know that. And so as a result, it's overly cautious and then you add in a car that's starting to pull up behind and it thinks, hey, that car is gonna pull into the blind spot of the car. And so therefore it was starting to stop. So that required me to take over and to turn left into the, uh, the turn lane. So up ahead, we've got a right at a light, which should be uneventful, we'll see how it can see this is one where there can be lots of cars blocking the turn lane and then we're going to turn right um, and then and then within about not even a tenth of a mile we have to turn left so kind of a right left and then we're going to go right again so 
Let's see here. It's not slowing down. There we go. It's starting to slow down. Sometimes I feel like it waits a little bit. But uneventful. So it turns to the right-hand lane. And then immediately is going to turn to the left hand. Well, let's see. Yeah, there we go. So I would have been in the right hand lane to turn left because there are two lanes because not even a tenth of a mile up here I'm going to have to turn right. So what's going to happen is uh, there'll be a car to my right. And so it's going to have to either slow down, which is what it will do, or, or I would have to speed up to go to be in the right hand lane. So let's see what happens here. But we'll wait for this light. It is really remarkable the amount of data that it's able to pull and it's able to see that truck that's parked up there, the car is going by left to right. So here we've got our green light. We're going to turn left and then immediately it's going to need to turn into the right hand lane and it actually took off faster than the car to the right. So there we go, uneventful. So again, the visualization is really cool in terms of the amount of data that it's aggregating uh, to pull in uh, just via all the different cameras and sensors. So we're going to turn right here. So far, a very uneventful drive uh, into work. So pretty slick. It's able to go the seven, eight miles. So that may not seem like a lot. And one would say, hey, why does it matter? It's only seven miles. I'll just drive the car. And that is perfectly acceptable. I think what's really remarkable is the ability to navigate left and right, to see all the signs. And I actually think it is a little bit uh, safer to drive because of the ability to read the stop signs, the lights cars coming in front, people trying to walk across. It really does a good job. But here we've got just a, about a half a mile and then we'll go left. Again, nothing too complicated in terms of roadways, but it just kind of gives you an idea as to what it's like uh, living every day with a uh, full self-driving beta. So not perfect. You cannot, you know, take your hands off the wheel and let it go uh, by itself. But on the whole, it is pretty remarkable what they've been able to do just in a what I would suggest is a very short period of time in terms of um, what it says. So let's see how long it takes till it nags and ask me to so it's changing lanes. I don't know why. It's stopping. Now it's no, nope, no. Nope. See it got a little confused there. But again, it did everything right. It just was a little bit so up here, in a moment, we should be turning left. And it should turn in here. There we go. I thought there was a cone in the middle of the road. I'm not sure why. Sees this truck pulling up. Let's see what happens. See, it's lighting up blue, thinking it could be coming into my incoming traffic. The car sto uh, truck stopped. Apply turning force. I'm going to go ahead and just apply some turning force. And then it should here in a moment. Let's see if it's going to pull me into the parking lot. It looks like it's going to. And then I'm going to take over control because. I'm here at the spot. I'm here at work. So it pulls in. Let's see what happens. All right, I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to park. Well, there you have it. 
that is a drive into work using full self-driving, so that gives you a sense as to what it's like. So overall, um, just about 100%. So we'll have to actually figure out, I'm gonna go back and look at the timestamps to see exactly what percentage of the driving on this drive it actually eliminated. So uh, anyways, first drive uh, from home into, uh, into our first work location here and we'll see a little bit more and we'll do another drive uh, which is a longer drive which will combine city driving highway or interstate and then back to city so it'll use full self-driving on navigate on autopilot and then it'll go back to full self-driving so we'll see how those two things interface and play together but overall pretty good so far while we're here at work let's go